I'm a newlywed, having been married for just three months. I've recently found myself contemplating people's blood types, particularly the B blood type. This interest stems from an encounter with my father-in-law. When I went to his house to seek approval for our marriage, he abruptly asked me about my blood type. Without hesitation, I responded that I have type B blood. To my surprise, he immediately made assumptions about my personality based on this information. He claimed that he had already suspected my blood type because, at first glance, I appeared stubborn and strong-willed. According to him, B types are known for being straightforward, quick to express their thoughts, and somewhat selfish. Frankly, I couldn't comprehend why he would make such generalizations. It was disheartening to experience this judgment solely based on our initial meeting and the subject of blood types. In reality, the idea of blood types determining personality traits lacks scientific evidence and is considered a fabricated concept that originated in Japan. It's hard to believe that there are still individuals who wholeheartedly believe in these unfounded interpretations and use them to pass judgment. Unfortunately, the inappropriate comments didn't end there. He proceeded to make derogatory remarks about my physical appearance, suggesting that women with similar body types to mine are generally unintelligent. He even went as far as questioning why I hadn't married earlier, insinuating that being over 30 years old and having a particular body type was a hindrance. It was absurd and humiliating to be subjected to such baseless and ignorant reasoning that I thought he would drive me mad that day and I really couldn't suppress feeling very offended by him, that despite the purpose of the meeting, I spoke my mind. Father, what is your blood tech then? I'm a hard-working and detail-oriented type A. What do you mean? A types are hard-working and detail-oriented. They're narrow-minded and tactless who can't speak up in front of people. But take avenge behind people's bags. That's T.A. Bay I read. So you have that kind of personality then, and it is said, if people have eyes with an extra small iris, more white scleropart, like you are very snobbish and perverted to the point of being vicious. I'm not saying that you are like that, so don't take me seriously at my words. His face turned burning red. He dished out so he shouldn't dish it except multiplied with interests added. Both my husband and his mother seemed very uncomfortable with how I didn't back down against my father-in-law's insolent behavior my husband took after his mother's personality where he avoids arguments at all costs and only threats about it inside by himself. So it was hard for them to watch us, however, looking at my father-in-law, then I shouldn't have let it pass so easily at that time but should have spoken out firmly about my mind even more than anyhow, my father-in-law was offended that I was talking back at him boldly, so he brought up the talk of money as a secret weapon to crush me. So, is your father just an office worker? I heard from Scott that he's around my age and his position is a manager. However, at his age, why is he only a manager? Also, I heard your father lives in a rented apartment. In such financial circumstances, would you be able to afford the wedding expenses? Even if I buy a 2,000 square feet condo for your newly wet home, you won't be able to afford to fill it with the furniture even. So I'm conflicted whether I should buy it for you or not. My father-in-law cleverly brought up my family's financial predicament to crush my pride. If that was his purpose, he succeeded at least halfway. Unlike my in-laws' rich family for generations who never had any money worries, my family could not survive if my father didn't bring home his pay even for a month. Truthfully, a huge financial gap existed between my father-in-law, who was an owner of vast real estate properties, and my father a salaried worker without any savings. Thus, I had nothing to say when it concerned money. The reason our family struggled financially was that my dad was trying to pay the medical expenses for my mom who passed away 17 years ago. He had to sell all of the properties he inherited from his father and his earnings all went to raising three children as a single father. He became a widower before he was even 40 years old and had to raise young children by himself. So he suffered a lot as a sole wage earner. He sent all three of us to college, so he had no savings. Of course, we were now paying off the student loans. 
as we all had jobs but still lived on a tight budget even if there was extra money in the family i couldn't take the money to spend it freely when i had my siblings and i had to think about my dad's life after he retired thus i was trying to get married with the money i had saved and my father-in-law knew that and was rubbing it in i bit my lips and couldn't say anything back my father-in-law saw me and smirked at me triumphantly right then my husband intervened you don't need to buy us our home we want to start on our own with money i have saved in a bank loan we will be able to buy a 1200 square feet townhouse we can start there and get a bigger one later my husband smiled at me however inside i wasn't pleased even though i may sound materialistic i thought why if his dad is going to buy us our home why refuse it how long would we have to struggle to get a place on our own on the other hand i felt ashamed that i was thinking like that which would make me no better person than my father-in-law so i sided with my husband right father thank you for thinking so generously of us but we are adults we'll try to buy it on our own i ended up saying what i didn't mean then my father-in-law seemed startled and stared at me intensely and said okay if we wanted that that's how my first meeting with my in-laws ended that day as i returned home in a taxi i felt sick and regretted that i turned down the 2000 square feet condo i was disappointed in myself that i was a materialistic person to covet something like that a few days later, my husband came over to my house to meet my family for the first time, since my mother passed away early, my dad filled in her shoes by acting like a mother to us. So my dad even took a half day off from work to prepare food when I got home with my husband. My dad had prepared and set the table already filled with various menus. We were both hungry as we came home straight from work, and the smell of food made all of us jump right into gobbling up the food like crazy. My dad looked at us eating so happily. Welcome to our family. A family is nothing special. If we eat together, then that makes a family. Scott, I hope you'll make our Susan happy. She lost her mom when she was young, so she suffered a lot. As the oldest daughter, she had a lot of responsibilities. That must have been hard for her but she would never complain and always put herself second to her younger siblings. So I want Susan to live for herself now and for her own happiness. As a father, I felt guilty for putting too much work on Susan to handle so on my behalf. I hope you'll be on her side and take good care of her. That's all I want. My dad had tears in his eyes as he talked to my husband. My husband seemed to be moved by my dad's sincereness, and unlike his normal self, he swore to my dad that he had nothing to worry about. So after we got the permission to marry for my dad, we set the wedding date. We also set the date for both sides of the family to meet before the wedding and made a reservation at a restaurant. I was still worried because wedding expenses and matters of the gifts were still not discussed, but I felt somewhat relieved that it progressed this far. On the day of our families were to meet our family of four left early, taking the subway because of the heavy weekend traffic, but we arrived earlier than we expected, so we decided to kill time at a large bookstore that was nearby. When we went into the bookstore, a middle-aged woman said hi to my dad as if she knew him. Then my dad also greeted her somehow awkwardly. At a glance, I could tell that my dad was uneasy to see her. On the other hand, she treated my dad as if she was my dad's superior. Well, John, what a surprise to see you here. It's good I ran into you. I was going to give to my husband to give it to you, but now that I met you here, I'll give it to you now last time. Thank you for helping us at our daughter's wedding. This is a gift certificate. Here, take it. She handed over an envelope containing a gift certificate, but my dad refused to take it. No matter that you work for my husband, but still you did all the work for our family. So please take it. You can buy a pair of nice shoes. Those shoes that you wore that day were so worn. I even felt embarrassed. 
Now that your daughter is getting married, you can't attend the wedding wearing such shoes, so please buy a new one with it. My dad kept refusing to take it. But when she put it like that, he became so ashamed that his ears turned red and awkwardly. He took the envelope from her. As I watched him, I got choked up. I hadn't paid any attention to him before, and only then I noticed his worn out shoes because I was busy trying to manage our household's tight budget. As his daughter, I felt so guilty for not even noticing about my dad's old shoes. That woman got in the elevator after my dad thanked her. When I asked my dad who she was, he said she was the wife of his boss at work. Then I remembered hearing about my dad's complaint about his boss. He was making my dad do his personal errands, putting my dad in an awkward position, whether early in the morning or late at night. His boss wouldn't care and kept calling my dad at his whim, demanding my dad to do things that were not related to work. My dad's position was a manager, but he made my dad deliver the wedding gifts for his daughter's in-laws. It wasn't only that when his daughter was coming back early after she had a fight with her newlywed husband from her honeymoon, he made my dad to go early in the morning to pick her up at the airport. He absolutely had no manners. I was so angry that I thought about sending a complaint letter to the company, CEO. Those were what I knew about, but at work, I wondered how much more he pestered my dad. I didn't even have to see it to know what was going on. Now that I saw how his wife treated my dad, my heart AED even more. It wasn't enough that my dad was being treated like that by his boss, but he was also being abused by the wife of his boss. I felt so sorry for my dad. If it weren't for his children, he could just quit, but he couldn't and had to endure such condescending treatment. At work. My dad, as if he got caught with humiliation, he didn't want us to see. He couldn't even look at us directly. And just rushed out of the bookstore. As I watched my father's back, I felt like crying, so I didn't ask anything more and rushed my younger siblings alone and went to the restaurant. My husband and my parents-in-law had already arrived at that moment. My father-in-law and my dad looked shocked as they saw each other. John, what are you doing here? Is Susan your daughter? My father-in-law frowned, displeased, and asked my dad, my dad's face hardened too, and just looked at me and my husband. He remained silent. At that time, I just thought my dad happened to know my in-laws, but my father-in-law happened to be my dad's boss. My dad was looking perplexed at my mother-in-law who was standing beside her husband. Then my father-in-law realized something wrong and quickly took my dad outside with him. Every one of us remained looking confused as what was going on. After about 10 minutes, my dad and my father-in-law came back. I didn't know what they had talked about, but my dad didn't look happy. On the other hand, my father-in-law acted as if nothing happened and acted snobbish in his usual ways. Who knew I would have, my employee as my in-laws, how small the world is. I heard that you had a daughter but I didn't know she would become my daughter-in-law. However, she's not like you at all. She's very blunt. You know my personality, but you need to tell your daughter about me so she would better understand me in the future. However, if the company finds out that you and I are in-laws, would it be uncomfortable for both of us? We can't say no when both of them want this marriage, so why not have a small wedding with just our family these days? A small wedding is a trend among young people. My father-in-law acted as if he was holding a company meeting and tried to decide everything his way. Even though that bothered me, no one said anything against it. That included my dad. That meeting ended with my father-in-law doing all the talking and deciding by himself. As soon as we got home, my dad called me separately and asked, Susan, do you have to have this marriage? I really don't like it. It's very uncomfortable to have my boss as my in-laws. My dad didn't finish his sentence. Dad, why should that matter? Even though it might be somewhat uncomfortable for you to say to me to give up this marriage is being too harsh, isn't it? You said you also liked Scott, didn't you? Dad, I'm asking you. 
I really want to marry Scott. My dad did not say anything more to me. Even if I were in my dad's position, it would have been very uncomfortable. It was hard enough when a couple works at the same company before in-laws to be working at the same company, and on top of that, he's the boss. I felt sorry for my dad, but he wasn't the only one who was uncomfortable. So was I. My father-in-law started to treat me as if I was his employee. He would call me at all times of day or night, and he'd make me run his errands for him. And even on my days off, he would call me to do his secretarial work. I felt like my dad and I both had become his slaves, but I could no longer speak up my mind like before. How could I do that to my dad's boss? Because I had many years of working. I knew very well what kind of jerk my dad's boss was like. So I had to just grit my teeth to bear with him. Time passed on and I was finished with almost all of the wedding preparations. My husband and I were on our way to get our wedding invitations. However, my father-in-law called me what to lie to the mother-in-law. It's not that hard. Your mother-in-law will be calling you today. Then just tell her that you and I were together to go to the department store, tell her that I bought you a luxury brand handbag. Okay. If you say something else, you won't be able to get married. Father, are you having an affair? Are you asking me to cover up for that? Then I won't do it. You want. Okay, then do whatever you want. But know this one thing at your father's age, he's up for the first to be on the list for being laid off. You know better if you're being that way. I have no reason to stick out my neck for him, so do whatever you want accordingly. He said what he wanted to say and hung up on me. It seemed that he must have bought a luxury brand handbag to his mistress and got caught by his wife's friend. He was using me as his alibi to cover up his crime. The more I thought of it, the more I became upset on top of his abusive behavior. Now he was trying to use his daughter-in-law to collude, to cover up his wrongdoings. On top of that, he was using my dad as a hostage to force his despicable ways. So I took my wedding invitation and went to my father-in-law's office with my husband. I wanted to tell him to break clean with his mistress in front of my husband. The totally unexpected thing happened when I asked for my father-in-law at the lobby. An employee said the vice president is not here. What? Vice president? At that moment, something clicked. Vice president? Then that boss that made my dad do all his personal errands, like his servant, including when his daughter got married, suddenly I felt conflicted. My dad had told me that the woman we met at the bookstore was his boss's wife. That meant my father-in-law was having two households. On top of that, he was blatant enough to call the company staff to the wedding of his daughter by his mistress. I couldn't believe his bold double life yet for his own son. He was asking for a small wedding because he didn't want to be caught that he had a mistress. He was just trash. It dawned on me why my dad was against this marriage. My dad knew that early on, and that's why he didn't want me to get married in such a family. I didn't know that and I acted like a slave for that man as my father-in-law, and I became furious at myself. That's why people's impression doesn't lie. He looked just like the way he acted. Selfish and boorish. My husband seemed to have caught on too and was flustered. I left the invitation card at the lobby to give to my father-in-law and came back with my husband. That night I confronted my dad. Dad, you knew early on that your boss was having an affair, right? Why didn't you tell me then? I wouldn't have been fooled and acting like a fool. I told him that I was going to call my mother-in-law and tell her about her husband's illicit affair. My husband was very upset and we thought it over a lot. We had to consider my mother-in-law's pain when she found out the truth, but my dad stopped me. Susan, don't do that. Just ignore it and cancel this wedding. I am pleading with you. It's embarrassing to say this in front of you, but I have to work there. I have to marry off Ricky and Eddie and provide support for you. Then I need to earn more money. 
You might criticize me for being a coward, but I have to take care of you even if I have to work like that, so don't do it for me please. I felt so angry inside, but when my dad pleaded with me like that, I couldn't do the way I wanted only. However, I didn't want to be treated like that any longer. Then something unexpected happened. Because of the wedding invitation we left at my father-in-law's company lobby. The news of his illicit affairs spread throughout his company. My husband was the one who told me to just leave the wedding invitation card at the lobby since his father was hard to see at home because he was too busy with his mistress. Now that their daughter living at the house of this mistress got married. Out of his father's greed, he mobilized his employees at work to the wedding using his title as the vice president backfired on him. The employees went to the wedding where their vice president claimed that it was for his only daughter only a month ago to see his son's wedding invitation card with a different name than his wife. It was a refutable proof. Whether it was me or not, he already had in his mind to have his son's wedding to be held privately with his family's attending. Only. What kind of selfish and rotten father is that when it rains, it pours? My mother-in-law who never goes to her husband's company, happened to drop by that day and heard the rumor. Of course, I had a slight push in that. I asked her that we should go by her husband's work to ask him to buy us lunch. My mother-in-law, who was usually very quiet and accommodating, found out about her husband's extramarital affair and turned into a tiger. You crazy old man. How could you be a human being? What your only daughter's wedding? If she's your only daughter, then who is the son? Is he a ghost? You kept saying how be blood type woman is, you should get a taste of your wife who's be blood type, how hard she can punch you. She scratched her husband's face and body all over with her sharp nails all over his study. Her husband's pulled out, hair was all over and floating in the air like dust. My father-in-law who hated blood type B so much was beaten up by his wife and was pleading for her forgiveness. Honey, it's a misunderstanding. Please. She is my deceased best friend's daughter, and I was just acting like your father at her wedding. Please, it's the truth. Please believe me. My father-in-law was lying through his teeth even in the situation to his wife. My mother-in-law got furious because he kept lying that she picked up one of his trophies and threw it at him, causing his nosebleed. You bastard, how dare you open your dirty mouth. That spits out only lies no matter how urgent. How could you use your dead friend to cover up your illicit affair? I don't know why the devil is doing and not taking trash like you to hell. You know what? What the blood be type of people hate the most. It's lying to date. Do you know how much I hated you for all your lies while I lived with you? Yet in this situation you are still lying trash like you should just die to save this world. You dirty trash. I was there to witness my quiet mother-in-law blow her stack. My father-in-law who was always abusive toward his staff and bragged about money, got humiliated work and got fired for the misuse of his power and got divorced with huge alimony order to be paid to his wife. Furthermore, my father-in-law had also experienced a devastating betrayal by his beloved mistress. It was revealed during a legal battle initiated by my mother-in-law, seeking compensation for the deception. In an unexpected turn of events, the mistress inadvertently confessed that the child he thought was his daughter was, in fact, not biologically related to him. As a consequence, my father-in-law lost everything, including his relationship with his son, and was forced to return to his hometown, where he now lives alone. In a way, he faced the consequences of his actions. After the tumultuous storm that shook our family, my husband and I finally had our wedding. Although our dwelling is not a lavish 2,000 square feet condo, we embarked on our new journey together in a modest townhouse. We made the conscious decision to start small and work our way towards a larger house. We wanted to achieve everything through our own efforts. Having witnessed the ordeal my father-in-law went through, I have come to appreciate my own father's love and dedication even more. Seeing that not all fathers are like mine, I hold greater respect for him, 
as he selflessly devoted his life to his children, single-handedly. He worked tirelessly and unwaveringly. As his daughter, it is my duty to reciprocate his love wholeheartedly. Thank you for lending an ear to my story. I hope you cherish your time with your family and find happiness in your life. Your encouragement and wise comments in the section below are greatly appreciated. Pressing the like button and subscribing would be a tremendous support to me. Wishing you a wonderful day ahead.